Good morning. Joseph Maxwell here. Beautiful morning in the Kansas City area. I wanted to pull together a video to show you how to use a composer patch to modify core Magento functionality. Now there are several ways to do it. We can use a uh, plugin, we can use a override or a preference, um, but composer patches have a very unique use case and my favorite is to fix core Magento bugs. We can easily rip them out at a later date. We know exactly what functionality has been modified, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, there's some very valid use cases, and I'm going to we're going to run inside here real quick, and we're going to take a look as far as how to make these modifications. Um, and I use a uh, I use an article from Classy Llama, great company, uh, and they have they have literally the commands it takes in order to uh, create uh, these composer patches. I reference it literally every time. I'll walk you really quickly through what does it take to create a composer patch. So let's get in there and let's do that. So when should we use a composer patch as opposed to a plugin or a preference, meaning an override for a class basically. We can extend it and then change major functionality in it. I think a great example of that would be a Magento bug. A core bug we come across, say we're using Magento 242. 243 has not been released yet and we find a really nasty problem. But the cool thing is we have identified that there's a pull request that's already available for it. That pull request obviously has a git patch and we can easily load that in to our composer patches we'll talk about here in just a minute. And uh, voila, the problem's fixed. Plugins, on the other hand, uh, well actually, let me just back up and say, I view composer patches as temporary, i.e. they're likely going to break on the next uh, update, but that's okay. They're, they're temporary in nature. We don't expect them to hang around for a long period of time. Uh, by contrast, plugins or preferences, and again, it's not a good idea to use preferences. If you come into a code base and there's a lot of preferences, that is a code smell and it's, pro it's indicative of uh, developers needing a little more education. Plugins are usually the best way to go. Again, there are some cases we can't use plugins, but at least 80% of the time, if not 90 plus percent of the time, a plugin works. Not an we don't have to use an override. This is when you have to modify, uh, permanently modify core functionality. Let's say you uh, need a different um, or some some changes made to a value that's returned, or you need to adjust the tax workflow of a of the system. Um, for example, uh, modules like TaxJar or um, Avalara, they, they have represent great modifications to the system, but it's permanent changes. It's not like we're fixing a tax calculation issue, right? So as such, um, a plugin or worst, worst case, an override becomes necessary to solve that problem. So let's talk about some composer patches. How do we do this? Again, I mentioned in the introduction that uh, Classy Llama has an article written by Eric Hansen, uh, a brilliant Magento developer, absolutely brilliant Magento developer. And they go through how to create these composer patches. And I would like to walk you through this situation. I was literally sitting down at my desk working on a project this morning for upcoming uh, course that I'm building out. And um, I was like, wait, what am I doing here? I was I was actually thinking about modifying some Magento core code just because there's really no reason to have it done any other way. Like there, this is just a more or less a sample project. Actually, it's a transformer, a data transformer that I'm working on for this project. And so I was like, wait, let's just modify core code. But I'm making this a permanent, fairly permanent uh, sort of, of mechanism here. And I'm, I'm being a little bit obtuse because I don't want to reveal too much about what I'm doing here. But all that to say, uh, here is the process that I am going to show you for how to create a composer patch. So let's jump in and let's review the instructions and then we will uh, build our composer patch and get that installed. So Classy Llama's website, um, just search for apply uh, composer patch Magento 2 Classy Llama. I don't even know if you have to use all those words. I think it ranks pretty high for that, that search term. So. Um, Basically, we have to initialize a Git repository. We add everything in there. We commit everything. Um, and so we have, so this, this initial commit basically starts a ground zero commit for our whatever uh, repository we are uh, creating or the Git repository we're creating. And it's just a temporary repository just in order to capture this place in time for, for this particular uh, composer patch. 
So we create this, uh, we, we commit all the files in that directory. So um, for in, in this example, we're in the, magenta, the catalog module. In my example, we will be in the customer module. We commit all the files in there, do an initial commit. Um, then, we, then we make our changes. So we see the changes made here. Uh, we, commit, whoopsie, we commit our new changes. And then this is the key one right here. We format patch dash one head. I got to get that committed to memory. For some reason, it just it does not stick into my head. Get format patch dash one head. And actually, this would be a great example, a use case for a alias, which actually is what I will do here once I'm done recording this video. It's very easy to create aliases as well. So uh, create an alias uh, to do this. So get format patch dash one or L. I think it's a one. It's kind of hard to read. Um, and then head. Once you do that, move the patch up into your modules uh, directory, so uh, into your root directory slash patches, copy it up there, and then make sure to clean out the .git directory from your module. So let's run through this um, ourselves. So this is, and I'm not going to say this is a the bastion of excellent examples of how to, of, of our use cases for creating a patch. I will not say that because it is not. Uh, but in my case, it was I was gonna, I'm going to create a Magento patch, uh, composer patch, and I thought I'll pull the video together about this. So don't try this at home because this is not a good uh, situation to create a patch for. But I think it still illustrates my point well. All right. So in this case, I actually want to eliminate region validation, um, not permanently in well. Kind of, yes, yes, permanently, but I'm still going to be validating it myself. I don't want to use the Magento validation mechanism. So ultimately, all I'm going to do is I'm going to return an empty array instead of errors. However, uh, what we need to do is we're going to drop that into the module customer directory. Um, actually, actually, the other way we can do this, I was, you can see my breakpoint is still set right here. Don't make any changes. That's the most important thing to remember. Don't make any changes because if you do, you're going to have to go revert them. So you want to start with clean, vanilla, blank slate at this time. Come up to here, module composer, right click and uh, hit open in, open in terminal. Done right there. That was super easy. So then we're going to do git init. And so we have our empty git repository, git add dot for add everything. It's going to take a second or two to add this in. Git commit everything initial commit that this commit message does not matter whatsoever. Now we go make our change. We have committed all files to this empty vanilla repository. It is at this point that we can make our change. So I'm going to do this and I find it very helpful to always notate uh, the changes that I make. Yes, it will be indicated in the patch. Yes, uh, we see that a patch has been applied, but this is in the case that I'm searching through this. I'm like, why is this returning an empty array? That This does not match Magento core code. What happened here? Oh, I did a patch. So instead, let's just save us some time. We'll do Swift, Otter, patched as we are uh, performing our own validation in AO, in AOD slash transformer. See, I think that's fairly understandable. Uh, let's drop down here. Okay, uh, let's see here. Git commit am um, removing customer address validation from core customer module. All right. So uh, now I'm going to, let's see if I can remember it. Git format dash patch. I think it dash one head. Yeah. Okay. I did remember that. Great. Okay. I, I feel pretty good about that. All right. So uh, we have now this patch file. And if we search here, we see it is available here. So um, now we need to create a new directory. Make dir I think it's this one. Yep. Patches. Um, we'll do uh, CPO1. Uh, up, up, up. Patches. And let's see here, we'll, we'll call it uh, remove uh, customer address validation, validation not patch, if I can spell correctly. There we go. Uh, now we have to remember to remove. Oops. If I can spell, there we go. Thank you. 
Uh, let's see your patches. There we go. Okay. So this is now set. The next thing we need to do is we need to go and come into Composer JSON. And we need to do, make a couple of changes. First, we need to install the C Wagons. I'm probably completely mispronouncing that. The C Wagons uh, um, patch module. So we'll come back here. Um, we will search for uh, like this. So we're patches, and we do our famous copy and replace. Oh, I don't see it right there, so we'll just do. Uh, whoops. We'll come back here. Uh, we do come. Composer require this one. Oh, I lost my terminal window. There it is back. It will take just a moment to get this set. Yeah, <laughs> that was easy. All right, so we have this installed. Let's go back and see exactly how to uh, apply this patch. So we see we need to make a change in our um, configuration here. So we have extra patches, uh, Drupal core, et cetera. So this is their example. Uh, let's just copy this aspect of uh, extra in uh, composer. Let's extra see that yeah, extra already exists. So we're just going to drop our node here. Patches, Drupal core. So we don't want to do uh, patch Drupal core. We're going to try, uh, patch Magento module customer. And again, um, an easy way to tell this, I don't think that there's any downsides with this method. Basically, you see that uh, it's going to go in the Magento dire uh, directory. So that's the first part of this. And uh, we have module customer applies right there. So uh, that's that would be the second part. So quite easy. Now, this is a really helpful we are able to uh, name this patch. So we have the file name. This, if, if I was working against a uh, ticket like an Argeris work, work system, I would definitely apply this. Uh, I would definitely mention it here and then a brief description of what we're doing here. Instead, uh, I'm gonna just label this as uh, removing uh, Magento customer directory validation. Uh, and then again, the other thing is this is very helpful uh, to name the patch. So we can do patches slash, uh, got to pull the file name here. Uh, oops, not, it's above this. Patches, copy path. There we go. Drop that in there. All right, so patches remove customer address validation. So th there's there's not a whole bunch that we can bring to the table as far as documentation on this. Um, I've, I've documented exactly what it is, where it is, that sort of thing. It's about all we can do. And just to be clear, um, we can see this is this is our patch, right? So again, very, very simple. Uh, one thing, a big gotcha, make sure that you add this patch. Um, let's see here, add it. You can't see it, just scrolled off my screen here. Make sure you add it to uh, your repository. When when this is added outside of PHP Storm, PHP Storm does not automatically add this. Well, uh, when it's added outside of it, so obviously it's not going to be automatically added into your Git repository. Uh, if you rely on that, this patch has not yet been added. So I am going to uh, take a moment and uh, add it really quickly. All right, now we run a composer update, and you can uh, run it for. Uh, and into a module dash customer if you would like. You'll see that this is, if, if this is working correctly for you, this is going to remove this module and it is going to reinstall it with the patch that is applied. So let's hang on here and make sure that this is applied as expected. All right, I just scrolled past real quick here, but it did apply. Uh, you'll see that it's uh, gathering dependencies, patches for dependencies. Might take a minute installing uh, the module and applying the patches. We see that this patch has applied, been applied correctly. We can come back into our, uh, I think it's address, no, I actually do not remember which file it is. Um, so we'll just pop this out. Great. And then we see this is still the case. So we went through an update cycle for this module and it is still here and available. So that is how to create a composer patch, why to do that. Uh, and I hope this is really beneficial to you. I use it on a fairly regular basis. 
solving problems, in this case, just kind of trying to work around something, and it might break in the future, that's that's possible, and, and it could be a better approach, ultimately, in the, in the use case that I have presented here, uh, to, well, actually, no, this is a private function, validate region, which comes from uh, this right here. So ultimately, the country is validated, the region is not. Uh, we could just use a, uh, a, a plugin. If, we were, if you were creating this for a merchant's website, it would be probably better to create a plugin, but uh, it's just I'm pulling something together again for this project, a transformational uh, tra a data transformer. You won't even ever see it out in production. So I thought this was a great example to pull together a composer patch in this case. So, hope you found this helpful. I uh, look forward to uh, see more information about uh, Swift Otter uh, and Magento development, e-commerce development. It is my passion to help you become an excellent e-commerce developer. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube just so that you do not miss uh, any further information as far as how to become an excellent Magento developer.